Yeah, it is a little hard to define, but I think what I'm going to say is that it's somebody who's got a nervous system, who's just, a, it, the nervous system is just physiologically more sensitive than other people's. So they're going to experience a broader range of emotion. They're going to feel things more deeply than perhaps um, most of us do. Uh, somebody who just has a lot of big feelings <laughs> and, and that's perfectly okay. There are some identifiers that you've given us. The first one being do they experience frequent mood changes? Yes, they absolutely do. Um, and so if you if you're in a relationship with somebody where you're not really sure if they're going to be in a good mood or kind of sad or a little worried, maybe a little irritable. Um, if the mood is changing a lot, that is that's usually a good barometer of emotional complexity. Number two, feeling things deeply. Definitely. So um, about 15 to 20% of the population, we know this from research, just has a more highly sensitive nervous system. Um, we call these people um, highly sensitive people. And it just means they feel things deeper. Uh, and so when that when that happens, um, they're going to they're going to experience all the same emotions that most of us do but they're gonna feel it in their bones. It is just going to be a more profound experience than, um, than it is for most of us. That said, on that list, you also have, they're, they're a little more empathetic toward others. Yes, so for highly sensitive people, it's not just their nervous system um, that is more active or picks up on things more. It's also their mirror neurons. Um, so these are the neurons in our body that are responsible for helping us put ourselves in someone else's shoes. For this percentage of people, they've got really strong mirror neurons so they can not just cognitively empathize or, or, or take someone's perspective, they feel it viscerally as though it's happening to them, uh, which is a gift and can be a bit of a struggle sometimes. One final marker to look for, is there a history with trauma? So typically what we see is that people who've experienced a lot of adversity in childhood, so I, I want to expand on the definition of trauma here, Any for anyone who's experienced a lot of adversity in childhood, their brains and their bodies get built around that. And again, when somebody's brain and body is built around adversity or toxic stress or childhood trauma, uh, it just means that their nervous system is more attuned and more sensitive to um, perceptions of threat or danger. Uh, and so for somebody with a trauma history, they are more likely to experience a broader, deeper range of emotions than the rest of us. So what can we do with this information now? Are there ways that we should be thinking about how we react or how we act? So this is complicated, uh, right? Because for, for so many people, who are emotionally complex, which is, you know, another way of saying have really sensitive nervous systems. They're used to being told um, that they're, they're crazy. They're overly sensitive. Something's wrong with them. They're making too big of a deal out of things, right? They're really shamed for, for feeling their feelings in this, in this special kind of way. Right. And so if this is somebody who we, we love, we trust, we feel like it's a healthy, caring relationship we want to do our best to really honor their feelings, not shame them for how they're feeling, let them experience it and just kind of let it move on like some dark clouds in the sky. Right. And if we try to engage with it too much, uh, it can be problematic for everybody. So patience, kindness, compassion, these are wonderful ways to interact. That being said, if the relationship does not feel reciprocal, does not feel healthy, um, does feel like you've got to constantly walk on eggshells and you you can't be honest in the same way that you're allowing that other person to be honest, that's, that's a different thing and, and requires probably a bit more self-reflection about what to do with that relationship.